Um, 1 Maccabees chapter 6, starting in, oh, let's start in verse 8. Now, this is really interesting, because earlier, remember, he said he, pro he uh, prospered to the south and to the east and to the beautiful land. Okay, we already figured out the south, and we figured out the beautiful land. But also, Antiochus, after he started doing all this stuff in Egypt, he went over into Persia to try to rob temples. Yes, he ended his career as a temple robber. Why? Because his treasury was out of money, and he heard there was a lot of gold to be had in the temples of Persepolis, where Cyrus started out, right? So he starts an expedition over into Persia. While all this was going on in Judah, he's over in Persia trying to rob temples. The citizens of the <coughs> town stopped him. I mean, come on, it wasn't even an army. The citizens of the town says, get out of here. He goes, okay, I'll leave, I'll leave. So he goes traipsing off with his tail between his legs back to what city? Make a wild guess, come on. Susan. No, not quite. Think about it. Think about it. Nasty city, Babylon. He goes back to Babylon. Nasty city, Babylon. <laughs> and guess where he died? In Babylon. Isn't this weird? He dies in Babylon. What of? <laughs> Oh, All of the above. No, none of the above. Worms. Yes, Ew, gross. Eaten up from the inside out by worms. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Matter of fact, the second Mac Maccabees talks about him stinking so bad that the people carrying him couldn't even stand it. And he, when he couldn't even stand his own stench, he finally decided to die. Finally decided, get rid of this nasty person. Yes. Now, first Maccabees is a little bit kinder. <laughs> Antiochus, tail between his legs, goes back to Babylon to kind of lick his wounds. Ooh, gross. Um, <laughs> sorry, I had to throw that one in. It just came to me. I didn't plan that one, really. <laughs> he goes back to Babylon, and he, at Babylon, just remember, he just got whipped. By the townspeople of Persepolis, his empire is falling apart, and this is where he gets news that Judah is in full revolt and winning. Chapter 6, verse 8. When the king heard the news about Judah winning, he was astounded and badly shaken. He took to his bed and became sick from disappointment because things had not turned out for him as he had planned. <laughs> He lay there for many days because deep disappointment had continually gripped him. Oh, by the way, that's a nice way of saying that his bowels were in massive disarray. Yes, he died of massive intestinal disgustingment. <clears throat> and realized that he was dying. So he called all his friends and said to him, Sleep is departed from my eyes, I am downhearted, weary, etc., etc., ad nauseum. All right, the dude finally just graced the earth and died on us. All right, eaten up from the inside out. And like I said, later on, it says, God did this to him. Not by human hand. All right, let's finish Daniel chapter 8, verse 26. The vision of the evenings and the mornings was, that was being given to you is, is true, but seal up the vision because it concerns the distant future. So, of course, I, Daniel, was exhausted and lay ill for seven days, several days. Then I got up and went about the king's business. I was appalled by the vision. It was beyond understanding. Okay. Just want you to kind of get something in your head right here. And Kim will probably mention it later, and then, we'll, then we're done. The, seal, the vision of the evenings and the mornings is true, but seal it up because it's in the long distant future. We're at 550 BC. This stuff is the long distant future, about 400 years down the pike. So seal it up because, you know what? Keep it to yourself for a while. Write it down, seal it up, because it's the long distant future. Go to Revelation for me. You knew I was going to end up in Revelation, right? I mean, come on. Just an assumption. 
Revelation chapter 22, the very end of the book of Revelation. <coughs> and I understand that time means nothing to God, but here's something for you to chew on. Revelation chapter 22. Um, bum, bum, bum. Uh, verse 10. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Now, a lot of people, scholars, and very, very intelligent people have said, well, the revelation is all about the future, and way out there in the future, and it's already been 2,000 years, and it hadn't come to pass, but, you know, it's, 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 it's coming somewhere in the future. Daniel's told, this is in the distant future, it's 400 years away, so seal it up. Revelation, John is told, hey, the time is at hand, it's happening now, don't seal it up because it's here. And people say, well, that's talking two, three thousand years down the road. Doesn't make sense to me. That's why I believe everything in the book of Revelation has already occurred. Okay, we'll just leave that one right there for you to chew on. Thank you very much. Next week we'll talk about chapter 9, which, by the way, is much more complicated than chapter 8. Chapter 8 was simple. <laughs> because we got the interpretation. Come on.